Hello, Algebra 2 class. This is the second lesson after Thanksgiving. This is a kind of tough lesson to do on video, but I'm going to do my best to explain this. And you can rewatch the video as many times as you want. That's the good thing about it. We're going to talk about solving quadratic equations, and hopefully you remember what a quadratic equation is. It has it's an equation with one unknown and has the number 2 as the highest power of the variable. Now we've done quadratic equations before, we've solved them. We've used two different methods. We've used the zero factor theorem and the zero factor theorem says, that's a really funny zero, that you can factor a, this is a quadratic equation right here, see the highest degree of 2. You can, what we have done is we set them equal to 0 and then we factor them like this and set the factors equal to 0 so we get x plus 2 x minus 1 equals 0 and then we set each factor equal to 0 we say x plus 2 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0 and then we solve each little equation so we get x equals negative 2 and x equals 1 that's how we solve them using the zero factor theorem the other way we've learned to factor them is by taking the square roots of both sides, but it has to be in this form if we're going to take the square roots of both sides. So if we're going to take the square root of this side, it looks like this, and the square root of this side, when you're taking the square root of num a number, you always have to do the plus or minus square root. So when you take, a square, a s take the square root of a square, it frees what's underneath it, so you get x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 3 and then you just get x by itself by adding 2 to both sides. And that's, this is the zero factor theorem and this is the taking the square root of both sides and that's not a theorem, it's just um, a way to solve it. Now, let's move down here. The quadratic equa equation below, right here, can't be solved by factoring it and it's not in the right form to do the taking the squares of both sides. So this one is not factorable. I can't think of any combination of factors that I can use to set it equal to zero. And it's not in the right form. I can't just take the square root of both sides. So the way we're gonna, what we're going to do now is we're going to put a f ones that cannot be factored, we're going to put into this form so that we can use the taking, of the square, taking the square root of both sides method. Completing the square is just putting it into this form. And it's, it's a lot of steps, and you're going to have to practice it. And once you get it, it's, it has a slight fun feel to it. So let's slide down here. My little, I didn't make my box, recording box, big enough to cover everything here. Here's our first quadratic equation. It'll tell you the method that you have to use at least initially to solve quadratic equations. So even if this is factorable, they want you to do it by completing the square. Our goal is to get it into the form a plus a x plus a quantity squared equals k. To do that, on the left hand side of the equation, we're going to make it into a perfect square trinomial. So let's just follow the steps. Let's see if I can move it. I don't know if I can get my steps over here. Let's see how that works. There we go. So this is our goal. We want to get in the form x plus a quantity squared equals some constant. The first thing you want to do, and you can refer back to these steps, you could pause the video and copy them if you want, is to set the equation equal to zero and put it in descending order of exponents. And if we look over here to our problem, it's already in set equal to zero, zero and in descending order of exponents. You have to have a coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared term. If you don't, you're going to have to divide everything by that number. But initially, they're always going to be 1. So we're not even going to worry about that for this lesson. The next step is to bring the constant to the right side and add a blank to the left and right side of the equation. So let's do that right now. This is the constant right here. That's our constant. That's our k we're going to bring it to the right side of the equation. We're going to complete a square, which means we're going to make a perfect square trinomial. Right now, this is not a perfect square trinomial, and in, in a second I'm going to talk about what a perfect square trinomial is. 
we're going to put a new number in there because he's not a, he doesn't make this a perfect square trinomial. We need to bring it to the other side. We're going to add a number that is a perfect square, but whatever we add to one side, we have to add to the other side. So let's just go off on the side for a second and talk about what a perfect square trinomial is. Let me see if I can find some space here. Okay, a perfect square trinomial, if we have something like x plus 7 quantity squared, if I foiled that out, that would be x plus 7 times x plus 7. That would be x squared, outer would be 7, inner would be 7. And the last, whoops, that should be 14. And the last would be 49. This right here is a perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial. You can identify a perfect square trinomial because it can be factored into this form. See how it can be factored into that form and that's what we're looking for. We're trying to get we're trying to get our problem into the form x plus a quantity squared equals k. So we're trying to get some sort of trinomial that can be factored into something times itself. Hopefully I can't see your reactions while I'm teaching this so I don't know how lost you are right now. But you need to be able to identify that this is a perfect square, square trinomial. The way you can tell if something's a perfect square trinomial is you take the square root of both end terms and multiply it by 2, all of those together times 2, and you should get the center term. That's how you can tell it's a perfect square trinomial. But the main thing is all perfect square trinomials factor into something quantity squared. So let's try to apply that as we go back here. So in order to get the perfect square, this is what we do. Let's read this. So we did this so far. We set the equation equal to zero. We brought the constant to the right side. We added a blank to the left and right side of the equation. And this will be the perfect square number that will complete the square. Now we have to find the perfect square number. The way we do this, and it's in the directions over here, is you take this term in front of the x, you divide it by 2, and you square it. So this would be 6 divided by 2 squared is 9, and we're going to add 9 to both sides. What I made is a perfect square trinomial like I showed you a minute ago. Since it's a perfect square trinomial, it'll, it'll factor into the form x plus 3 quantity squared equals 13. Now it's in the form up here. It's in this form so that we can take the square root of both sides like we did up here in this problem. This problem came in the right form so all we had to do is take the square root of both sides. What we've done is we made it into that form so that now we can take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of x plus 3 quantity squared and then don't forget you have to do the plus or minus square root of 13 and we're going to get x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 13 and if we subtract 3 from both sides we get our value. We get x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 13. Typically we put the constant value first and then the square, they're both constants, but we put the non-irrational number first to do these problems. Now these take a lot of practice, so I intend to do several problems just so you get, get the hang of it. Okay, here we go, our next one. Solve by completing the square. First thing you have to do is set it equal to zero and make sure it's in descending order of variables. It's not, so we have to rearrange it, so you get x squared plus 2x minus 5 equals 0. We examine this. Is it a perfect square trinomial? Well, right away we can tell it's not because the 5 isn't even a perfect square. So it's not a perfect square trinomial. So we need to find a number that will make this trinomial a perfect square trinomial. And we're leaving a blank right there to put that perfect number. We have to move this imperfect guy to the other side because he is not working for us. And we still have to add something. Whatever we add to this side, we have to add to the right side to keep our equation balanced. 
To figure out this number, this is the tricky part, you take the number in front of the x, you divide it by 2, and you square it. And we're going to get 1. So we're going to add 1 to both sides of the equation. Next, we're going to factor the perfect square trinomial into this form, x plus a quantity squared. So we're going to factor it into x plus 1 quantity squared equals 6. Now it's in the form that we had it before. We can take the square root of both sides, like such, and like such. Make sure that's plus or minus. We get x plus 1 equals, now this, this uh, completing the square method we're going to use later to graph circles and ellipses and things, and uh, even parabolas. So it's really important you understand how to do the completing the square. Then we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. And that's the solution. Now quadratic equations, you always have two solutions. Sometimes they're the same answer, but you always get two. And here we get two answers. We get x equals negative 1 plus the square root of 6, and x equals negative 1 minus the square root of 6. OK, I told you we're going to do plenty of examples. All right. This one is not set equal to 0. That's the first step. You might have to go back and look at the steps. So we get x squared minus 5x plus 5 equals 0. Right away, we notice this is not a perfect square, so we have to throw them to the other side, but leave a replacement spot to get a replacement guy. Replacement guy, that 5 has to leave us and go on the imperfect side, and we have to add the same thing to both sides. This one's a little trickier because we're going to get a fraction. We take this value, the one in front of the x, I'm just going to do it over here, 5 divided by 2, you take it, you always divide it by 2, then you square it, and we're going to get a perfect square number that perfectly completes this, perf this tri trinomial. So we're going to get 25 over 4, and this isn't nice, but you are in Algebra 2 now. This is a perfect square trinomial, so you know you're going to factor it in the square root of this, whatever that sign is, the square root of this. You don't have to think too hard about it. It's always the square root of the n, guys. And then we have to find our common denominator, so this would be 25 over, whoops, it's over, over 4, so it's going to be 20 over 4 like that. That should equal negative 5, and then we add it so we get 5 over 4. Take the square root of both sides, so we're going to get x minus 5 halves equals plus or minus the square root of 5 over 4, and then we can simplify it. We get x equals 5 halves, because I'm adding this to that side, plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. And that is your final answer. So I have two problems down here. Give it a try. Take your time. You might have to look again at, um, at the steps. I'm hoping you wrote it down. If not, you might have to rewind and write it down. All right, turn off the video and try the first problem, then turn it on, and then try the second problem. All right, let's see how you did. Hopefully you put some effort into it. So we, it's not in order, so we have to put it in decreasing order of exponents. x squared plus 12x minus 5 equals 0. Bring the negative 5 to the other side, make it a positive 5, so you get x squared, because it's not a perfect square. Well, plus 12x plus something equals 5 plus something. How do you get the something? Think about it. Do you remember? You take this term right here, 12, you divide it by 2, and you square it. So you're going to get 36. Add it to both sides, and you made yourself a perfect square trinomial. Now remember, this perfect square trinomial, if you're, I'm not sure if you're knowing, understanding where I'm getting it, if I would factor this, I would get x plus 6 x plus 6, right? All perfect s square trinomials 
will factor into something times itself. So that's how we get this x plus 6 quantity squared equals 41. And then you take the square root of both sides, so you get x plus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 41, and you get x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 41. If I didn't make any mistakes on that one. Okay, let's try one more. Turn off the video and try this yourself. All right, so let's see how you did. Set it equal to 0. x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. Now that looks like it could be a perfect square. Looks pretty close. Um, let's see if it works. If I took x, it can't be. The reason it can't be is we have a negative sign right there. All perfect square trinomials have a positive um, perfect square at the end. So right away, I know it's not a perfect square. You could try factoring it, though. If you weren't sure, you could do 1 and 1. There's no way you're going to get a 1 in the middle. So we have to find the right perfect square. So we get x squared plus x plus the perfect square guy equals 1 plus whatever you added to the left, you have to add to the right. Coefficient of this is 1. So I'm going to take 1 divided by 2 and square it. Add it to both sides, 1 fourth. That's complicated. And now we can factor it into um, something quantity squared. So we're going to get x plus 1 half. I can't tell what questions you have since I can't see you. But remember, if we take the square root of this, we're going to get a half. The square root of this, we're going to get x equals 4 fourths plus 1 fourth is 5 fourths square root of both sides, so you get x plus 1 half equals square root of plus or minus the square root of 5 fourths. And we just simplify it a little bit, so we get x equals negative 1 half plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Not a nice answer, but it is what x equals. If you would put this in your calculator, put it in for the x's, you should get 0 even though that's irrational. Okay, that is it for lesson 50. If I can turn this off.